Ronald Acuna hit 41 jacks this year and stole 73 bases. On Mookie Betts' most recent podcast, J.D. Martinez described him in one word, and that one word was twitchy. Dude, but then when you see him in the box, he seems like he's huge. Yeah. And then he hits the ball, and you're like, that's different. That's different. When it comes off his bat, you're like, that's different. It's so loud and so fast. It's so twitchy. Give him one word that I would describe him with is twitch. Typically, when we think twitchy, we think of fast twitch muscle fibers. Because fast twitch muscle fibers contract more quickly than slow twitch fibers. They generate rapid, powerful contractions, making them well suited for activities that require sudden bursts of strength or speed, such as hitting a baseball or stealing a base. So sure, if you want to get twitchy like Acuna, you need to be on a solid program building your fast twitch muscle fibers. But I'll be honest with you, that takes a long time and it's not the direction that I wanna head with this video. What if I told you there was another way to become quote unquote twitchy? And that other way is taking our focus off the muscle, the type two fibers, and placing that focus on tendon stiffness and resilience. When we look at tendons, they act as springs, storing and releasing energy during movements. When a muscle contracts, the tendon stretches slightly, storing energy. That stored energy is released when the muscle relaxes, aiding in efficient and powerful movement. So the main role of tendons is to transmit the force generated by the muscle to the bones, allowing a certain movement to occur. So your brain tells the muscle, the muscle tells the tendon, then the tendon moves the bone. And this phenomenon is called your electromechanical delay. And by decreasing this delay, you're going to be quote unquote more twitchy. And there's two main ways to decrease this delay. Number one, like I said before, is training fast twitch fibers and training the muscles to be tighter, more condensed. So when the brain tells the muscle, the muscle is shorter and way more responsive. And number two is training that tendon stiffness. So take a band, picture this as your tendon. So when the brain tells the muscle to move the tendon, if you have a loose tendon, it's going to take a while before that tendon pulls on the bone. So if you can stiffen up your tendons through training, when your brain tells your muscle, your muscle tells the tendon, then it doesn't have to go as far because of that tendon stiffness. But this is a juggling act because why? Stiff tendons are very good conductors of power, but stiff tendons also leave you more susceptible to overstretching injuries. Look at Aaron Rodgers. RIP, that's exactly what happened to him. He couldn't withstand the eccentric and the lengthening forces, especially with that foot behind him, then the Achilles rupture. So how do you train these tendons to be more twitchy, more stiff, but also more resilient and durable? And you can do so by adding in extensive plyometrics. Plyometric training in general involves rapid explosive movements that rely on the stretch shortening cycle of muscles and the tendons. Extensive plyometrics involve the lower intensity and high volume exercises compared to its counterpart, intensive plyometrics, which emphasize the high intensity, lower volume activity. So why extensive plyometrics can be effective for building tendon stiffness and resilience is because the repetitive loading and unloading of tendons stimulates adaptations that enhance tendon health. These adaptations can include increased collagen production and improved tendon density. And they help reduce the risk of tendon injuries, such as tendinopathies or strains that can occur in athletes participating in high intensity and repetitive activities. And the biggest issue with extensive plyometrics is athletes a lot of the times like to tense up and use the muscle and not the tendon. You ask Usain Bolt, right, when he's running in his races, he uses 80% intensity. You ask some big leaguers when they swing, they use 80% intensity. That's because they don't wanna rely on tight, tense muscle. They wanna rely on the tendon. So a good way to do that while training extensive plyometrics 
is we like to use Airwave. The Airwave performance mouthpiece creates the optimal airway and activates neuromuscular response. It's patented and scientifically proven to provide athletes with increased endurance while reducing your respiratory rate by 20%. It increases strength and improves muscular force and you'll get faster recovery because it reduces cortisol buildup levels by up to 50%. The airway has a thin design with a wide bite channel for that relaxed fit. And that relaxed fit is what we're looking for because all that tension is gonna start from your mouth. If we can relax up top, it's gonna relax the entire muscular system, helping us rely on the tendons when we do these extensive plyometrics. The first extensive plyometric drill that we do every single day is simple pogos. We like to go down 15 to 20 yards. What we're gonna do is place our hands on our hips. From here, we're gonna do little jumps, just utilizing the ankle. So it's gonna be big Achilles tendon here. Juice has his airway in. He's nice and relaxed up top. That's gonna lead to the lower body. We don't want big knee flexion here. We wanna turn the muscle off and think tendon. The second extensive plyo that we do every single day before our training session is a ascending ski jump. So we're facing one way, it's a lateral jump, and we're replacing the foot on the other side. We go for distance here. Notice how he's getting that rhythm, just going through that Achilles tendon, just popping, popping, popping. We go 15, 20 yards here. Again, we're going low intensity here. I look at Juice's face here. He should be nice, calm, cold, collective. Our third extensive plyo that we do comes from PJF Performance. He's one of the best there is when talking extensive plyometric. So this is one that he calls the frontline backline. So go ahead, put your foot up. So from here, we're doing that low intensity rhythmic pattern going back and forth. So go ahead, hit it. Pop, pop, pop as quickly as possible. Now come back here. So as Juice or as the athlete gets back here, as they're doing their extensive plyos, this is the weakest position and this is the position we need to train. Look what happened to Aaron Rodgers. His foot was behind his hip when he stretched and tore his Achilles because that's gonna be your longest stretch as that foot's behind you. And if we can train the Achilles in this length and position to be resilient and to fire rapidly, it's gonna improve that tendon stiffness and tendon durability at that high joint angle. So the entire goal of this should be, as the foot goes back, you don't wanna collapse it. He's the weakest at this back portion. So try to keep that heel up off the ground. That's gonna build that stiffness. Hey, that's a wrap. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure if you wanna get twitchy like Acuna, you're hitting these extensive plyos. You can do these every single day before your training session. And make sure you check out Airwave in the description below if you want to relax and get the most out of your extensive plyometric training.